Slitsky की इक्वेशन वेन द प्राइज ऑफ द गुड इज चेंजिंग इट्स ए प्राइज ऑफ गुड एक्स हैज डिक्रीज एंड वी टॉकिंग अबाउट अ टू कमोडिटी वर्ल्ड एक्स एंड वाई यू आर कंज्यूमिंग टू गुड्स एक्स एंड वाई एंड द प्राइज ऑफ गुड एक्स हैज डिक्रीज so what has happened is it means that the relative price of x has changed now what do you mean by this you mean this that now you have to give up less and less amount of y in order to get one more unit of x right because the price of good x has decreased right good has good x has become cheaper so you will consume more of that good right keeping the purchasing power constant i'll i'll write all of these things also at the same time when the price of good one has decreased what has happened is that the purchasing power has increased now when purchasing power has increased although the amount of the nominal income which you have that is same but because the price of good x has decreased you can buy more amount of the goods and services from the same nominal income which you have right so that's the second effect so when the price of good x changes of course the total demand is changing and we want to decompose this total change in demand into the two effects one is the substitution effect and other one is the income effect let's look at that let, let me write these points first so this is what we have written when the price of the good x is changing let's say the price of good x has fallen so what has happened there is going to be the change in demand for good x of course the rate of the exchange between good 1 and good 2 has changed so now since good 1 has become cheaper so you need to give up now lesser amount of good 2 in order to get one more unit of good 1 that is one thing so that is what the substitution effect is also when the price of good 1 has fallen your purchasing power has increased so since purchasing power has increased you can buy more amount of the goods and services from the given nominal income that is what the income effect is so when you talk talk about the first point that is what the substitution effect so you keep the purchasing power constant and then try to see the change in demand resulting from the change in the relative prices right when you want to see the income effect you keep the the relative price is constant and try to find out the change in demand due to the change in the purchasing power that is what we want to do uh, so for uh, for substitution effect so that's what we have written that is when you are trying to find out the substitution effect uh, you will you will change the relative prices but you will adjust the money income so that the purchasing power is held constant we'll do a numerical based on this so that it become it will become clear to you and for income effect we will let the purchasing power change and we'll keep the relative prices constant so let me draw a graph based on this what do i mean by all this let me draw the graph now let us say this is my original budget line and this guy is the original indifference curve and i am consuming x so x is x1 x2 and uh, the price of x1 has fallen so when price of x1 has fallen what has happened is that uh, the optimal also has changed the optimal now is this guy hmm. so let me call this point as x dash so i want to draw a fictitious budget line now it should look like parallel hmm? just like this something like this hmm just a fictitious budget line like this and uh, this is passing through x but it is parallel to the new budget line is passing through x but it is parallel to the new budget line 
right so <clears throat> i'll draw a new curve on this let's say don't make the interference curves intersect don't make them intersect so this is the new point let's say on the fictitious budget line x double dash right okay <clears throat> so i hope this is clear to us that this guy you can also draw this in a new ink if you want this this violet line is the original budget line so original budget line means this original budget line has a slope of p1 by p2 mm -hmm. and uh, so original prices are p1 p2 original income is right and original consumption bundle is x original consumption bundle is x fair enough now suppose the price of good x has fallen so when price of good x has fallen like this hmm? so now what happens when the price of good x has fallen so the price ratio becomes p1 dash p2 prices are p1 dash comma p2 you still have the nominal income constant at m so there is no change in that so original so you still have an original income out here So new prices and original income, it will give you the final consumption bundle x dash. And if you look at this blue line, the way it is drawn, right? So I'm I'm not superimposing any line on this. So the way this line is drawn is that you have to pass this budget line through the original consumption bundle. Why? Because you want to keep the purchasing power constant. How do you keep the purchasing power constant? Because it is passing through the original bundle and it should be parallel to the new budget line. So when it is parallel to the new budget line, it means that this fictitious budget line, this blue budget line is having the same slope as the new budget line which is p1 dash by p2 right so that's an intermediate bundle right so <clears throat> now if you if you if you look at this carefully you'll find this bundle x is lying on the original bundle as well as on the fictitious budget line that's right let me write that point right since the original bundle x lies on both the original budget line and the fictitious budget line so original bundle is just affordable i am not saying that on the on the fictitious budget line original bundle is optimal no i am not saying that i am just saying that it lies on the fictitious budget line so if it is lying on the fictitious budget line it means what it means that this is affordable right so original bundle is just affordable.
So when you are keeping the original bundle affordable, so that's the other way of saying that you're keeping the purchasing power constant, right? So, <clears throat> and uh, uh, the purchasing power is constant. Why? Because the original bundle is affordable even at the new prices, right? I'm not saying that at the new prices, this original bundle is optimal. On these, on, on this fictitious budget line, original bundle is optimal. No, what I'm saying is that on this fictitious budget line, original bundle is affordable. That is it, right? So this is the way you're keeping the purchasing power constant. So the purchasing power <clears throat> of the consumer has remained constant. In the sense that original bundle is just affordable at the fictitious budget line. So the question is that how much money income we need to adjust to keep the old bundle just affordable? Well, let us say M is of course the original income. M dash is that amount of money income which will keep just the original bundle affordable, right? Old bundle or original bundle affordable. So let us say M dash is uh, that level of money income that will keep original bundle affordable, right? So original bundle affordable. Now, bundle X, it was affordable even at the original budget line. So original budget line means the prices were P1, P2 and M. Bundle X was also affordable at the fictitious budget line. That means fictitious budget line Prices were P1 dash, P2, sorry, not P2 dash, just P2 and M dash. New income. As you guys could see, this X is lying on both the violet line. So violet line would mean P1 by P2. Blue line would mean P1 dash by P2, right? This violet line is original income. This blue line is showing the fictitious level of income, right? So, since it is lying on, uh, on, on the initial budget line, so X is what beta? X1 comma X2, that is what X is. So it is M1, P1, X1 plus P2, X2. And it is also lying on the fictitious budget line. So it is like this. It will also satisfy this budget line, right? So I can subtract second from the first. So M dash minus M 
is delta n, p1 dash minus p is delta p x1. You with me? So what is this delta m? Delta m is this just the change in money income that is necessary to make the old bundle just affordable. That is what delta m is. That is what delta m is. So delta m is necessary to make the original bundle affordable, right? Necessary to make the original bundle affordable. Now you understand this thing also when the price of the good has fallen. So it means what the purchasing power has increased. Now when the purchasing power has increased and uh, if I want to keep the purchasing power fixed, I have to take some money income back from you. You understand that when the price of good has fallen, purchasing power has increased. I want to keep the purchasing power constant. I have to take some money income back from you. When the price of good has increased, it means purchasing power would have fallen. I want to keep the purchasing power constant. So I'll have to give some money income back to you. You get the point. So that's an idea. Uh, so you also understand this guy that X is what my original income or original bundle. X dash is what my final bundle and X double dash is what my intermediate bundle. So although when the price has changed in the market, we just see the movement from X to X dash. Now we are decomposing this entire movement of from X to X dash into substitution effect and income effect. So the movement from X to X double dash, what has happened out here? It means here purchasing power is constant. Only the relative prices are changing. Purchasing power is constant. Only the relative prices are changing. So this is what my substitution effect is. So this movement this movement from X to X double dash is what the substitution effect is. So consumer is substituting one good for the another, keeping the purchasing power constant, keeping the purchasing power constant when the price is changing. Now let us look at, so basically what you're saying is what? The substitution effect is, uh, is demand for X1. When the price of X1 has changed, price of X2 is constant. And at this level of nominal income M dash, you're keeping the purchasing power constant minus the original demand. That is when price of X1 is P1, price of X2 is P2 and you have an original income like this. Whether I write M dash or I write M, make sure that your purchasing power is constant out here. Right, so this is what my substitution effect is. Let me do an example out here, which is given in variant as well. So you have the demand function X. Like this, so you have the demand function like this. But our original income is, uh, they've given it's 120. Original price is $3. So original bundle what is going to be the original bundle x1 which is the function of original price and original income what will that be your x1 which is equal to 10 plus income is 120 upon 10 into 3. So this comes out to be 14. This comes out to be 14. Now suppose price of good X, it falls to $2. Right? So at this price, the demand is going to be, we're just finding out the total demand. We're not keeping the purchasing power constant. We're just finding out the total demand. <clears throat> 
the total demand is going to be 10 plus income is 120 plus uh, your 10 into 2 sorry 10 into 2 so this is going to be 16 now so when price of x has fallen your income is constant at uh, 120 only we have not tried to keep the purchasing power constant we'll do that right now but just at your original income and the new prices what has happened the demand has increased from 14 to 16 so your total effect total effect is the demand when price has changed that is new prices and original income minus demand at the original prices and original income. So that means 16 minus 14 that is equal to 2. Now when we want to find out the substitution effect we want to keep the purchasing power constant. So how do we keep the purchasing power constant? We have just done that. We need to adjust the money income, right? We have to adjust the money income. So we need to ask that how much income would have to change, how much your nominal income has to change to keep the original bundle affordable at the new prices. So how do you do that? You've just found this out, beta. Delta M is delta P into X1. That's what it is. Delta P into X1. So delta P is what? your uh, 3 minus 2 right x1 is what original bundle uh -huh. x1 is what original bundle that is equal to 14 then 1 into 14 that is equal to 14 now think about it here the price of the good has fallen the price of the good has fallen so what will happen you have means purchasing power has increased so when purchasing power has increased, you have to take some money income back from him so that to keep the purchasing power constant. So how do you do that? So how do you do that? You will have to subtract this 14 from the original income. You have to understand this very well. Since the price of the good has fallen, purchasing power has increased. Because purchasing power has, has uh, increased, I will have to take some money income back from him to keep the purchasing power constant. So it means what your uh, so what is the level of income that is necessary to keep the purchasing power constant so that is m dash and this m dash is m plus delta m but i'll think about this delta m in my head in the way that since the per since the price of the good has fallen purchasing power has increased in order to keep the purchasing power constant i'll take some money income back from him so M is what? 120. Here price of the good has fallen. Purchasing power has increased. I'll take some money income back from him. So this is that change which I'll take back from him. That is 106. So if your income would have been 106, P1 dash would have been 2. Then if you find out uh, the demand, from there you can get the substitution effect. How? So now I'm going to find out the demand when the price level has changed and income is M dash. So what is that? 10 plus 106 upon 10 into 2 upon 10 into 2 and this comes out to be 15.3. This comes out to be 15.3. Right. So your substitution effect is. The intermediate consumption minus original consumption. Intermediate consumption minus original consumption. So that is what beta? 15.3 minus 14. That is 1.3. Right? That is 1.3. And I can also write in terms of what is income effect. Income effect is simple. Income effect is this. So the movement from, so this is what my x is beta. 
uh, this is what x dash is. So this is what substitution effect is. And this movement from x dash to x double dash is what income effect is. This movement from x to x dash is what total effect is. Movement from x, x double dash to x dash is what income effect is. So writing about income effect. So this parallel shift in the budget line uh, occurs when the, when the income is changing and the relative price is constant. So the parallel shift in budget line is the movement that occurs when income changes And relative price and relative price is constant. So you are doing what? You are just allowing your income to change, right? Um, while keeping the prices uh, constant. So this movement from x double dash to x dash. This is what you need to find out. So we simply change, uh, we change the income from M to M dash, right? While keeping uh, new price ratio. P1 dash P2. So it is what? Delta X1 M is X dash minus X double dash. So X dash is what? X dash is what? Your final bundle. So final bundle is what? New prices original income minus x double dash what what is that intermediate bundle intermediate bundle is what new prices and fictitious level of income m dash so it is what beta you have already calculated the 16 final bundle you've already calculated the 16 that is what the final bundle is so this 14 is what the original bundle Sixteen is the final bundle, and this fifteen point three is what intermediate bundle. Intermediate bundle, right? So it is what Sixteen minus fifteen point three, and this comes out to be zero point seven. So this movement from x equals to fourteen to x equal to sixteen, that is two units change, is being decomposed into substitution effect, which is one point three, and income effect, which is zero point seven. Right. So this is uh, what I wanted to do in this recording beta. Thank you.